And this one is a competitive game where each player starts the game with their own garden board. And it's going to be mostly empty at the beginning of the game, other than it being covered with a bunch of sleeping gnomes. And there's also going to be these two holes here that the gnomes are going to be trying to escape into as another player tries to steal them from you. Because each player is going to have these two wizard miniatures, but these aren't going to be on your own board. Instead, they're going to be on one of your neighbors. All the gnomes are laying down because they're currently sleeping, but at the start of each game of Hedge Maze, you're going to be drawing a card for each type of gnome. And then this is going to be giving all the players certain requirements that if they're able to meet, they'll be able to wake up whichever gnome that they were able to complete that objective with. That gnome's going to be stood up, which does also allow you to spend movement points on it as if it was one of your wizards. But this is a game that plays over 10 rounds of simultaneous actions where every round there's going to be a card drawn and then that's going to be dictating the tile that each player has to place onto their garden board. You're going to want to place these on your board so that they cause the most trouble for your opponent's wizards that are also on your board. You can never completely block off an area on your board, but you can place these strategically to try and create long winding paths so that your opponent has to waste a lot of movement points in order to try and get where they're going to. You'll also notice that the tiles have these sigils on them and those represent the movement points that you're going to be gaining. And for each tile that you place on your board, that's going to be gaining you one movement point. But for each other tile that is in the same row or column of that tile, you're going to be gaining additional movement points. You can spend those movement points on any of your wizards or any of the gnomes that you've woken up on your neighbor's board. And the nice thing about your wizards is that you can actually pick up and drop gnomes which can come in handy because you can actually drop them on the hedges and then pick them up from the other side. So if you have one of your wizards on one side of the hedge and another one of your wizards on the opposite side, you can actually toss a gnome right over that hedge in order to try and cut a quicker path through the board. As I mentioned before, awake gnomes can also be moved by using movement points. But carrying around these gnomes is a really nice way to move those sleeping gnomes. If you're able to get any gnomes to those tunnel tiles, then you'll be able to take that gnome into your possession and put it out on your gnome home board. This is nice because for each time that you do this, you're going to be gaining the bonus token of whichever icon you're covering, which can gain you extra movements in different ways, or even spring mushrooms that allow you to jump to different areas of the board. At the end of the game, you're going to be gaining points for all the gnomes that you're able to steal from your opponent's board, but then also gaining points for any of the gnomes that you are able to prevent your other opponent from stealing from you. The player with the most points at the end of the game wins the game, and if you want to check this one out, I will have it linked down below.